It's autumn, and one of the biggest annual migrations has already begun. Birds migrating from Europe to Africa are gathering in Malta, a small island off the coast of Italy. This island is an essential resting ground before the birds attempt the 300 kilometer flight across the Mediterranean Ocean to Africa. They are eagerly awaited. Hunting is a popular sport in Malta and there are 10,000 licensed hunters on the prowl. But not all hunters stay on the right side of the law. This is an adult male honey buzzard that was found. It's migrating from Northern Europe to Africa to overwinter. We suspect it's been shot. It has both legs injured. Um, well, they appear to be broken, as you can see. And these birds eat grubs and larvae, so they use their feet to dig around in the dirt. So without use of its legs, it wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. And you can also see um, the tail feathers have damage, presumably from shot pellet coming through. We're going to take it to the vet to determine the cause of injuries and the outcome for the bird. And as the leg is broken, it's, it's an open fracture, infected. Yes, and it's very painful as well. He cannot even drive with his legs. So, really, really, we're going to euthanize this bird because we'll never be able to hunt again with legs like this or to work. And there's even one leg, broken leg, is enough, unfortunately, to make this decision. So, that's what we're going to and there is no doubt that this is a short term or more than one short term. This bird had both of the legs, they were injured. I mean, it's, these are short gun injuries. And uh, I mean, it's a, a, a bird which hunts and uses his, his legs to hunt, obviously cannot, cannot, cannot even perch, cannot even sit up. So we had to put him to sleep. The man who found the bird agreed to an interview, on the condition that his identity remain secret. No, I just was walking, and I heard some noises. I think it was maybe some of these. And you know, you look when you hear noises. I thought it's a cat, and then I saw her, and I just picked it up from here. It was somewhere over here. It was a horrible, you know, view to see a bird like that. I don't think they killed it right away. It was for a long time here, I think. I was unlucky. <laughs> and the bird was unlucky too, by the way. But I tried to save it. If I could spend money on it, and at least save it and then leave it, I would have done it just the same. It is a very big problem, actually. Because I love birds, I love to see birds. And it's my right to see a bird in the tree, and not that. Why they shoot it and kill it? so I can't see it. So it's a big problem. Because for a few couple of people that are hunters, they are taking our rights. It's simple. Raptors are vulnerable to overexploitation, since these top predators tend to have a low reproductive rate. However, when a species is rare, every single individual is invaluable. This is a juvenile pallid harrier that we received on the eighth day of the hunting season. It was the seventh shot protected bird we'd received. It's a juvenile so it's on its first migration to overwinter in Africa. Unfortunately there's nowhere within Malta where they can rehabilitate birds. So for species like the pallid harrier which are relatively rare we'll see if we can get it sent somewhere where it has a better chance. This bird in terms of being shot is actually a lucky one because rather than having numerous severe injuries it has a hairline fracture and we're hoping that it will be able to be rehabilitated. It's going to go for a second assessment with the vet today while we wait for permits to send it to a rehabilitation centre overseas.
The pellet harrier has been termed as being fit for rehabilitation, so we've made an arrangement to send the bird over to Sicily. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a rehabilitation center in Malta, which treats these kind of injuries and for these kind of birds. And being a pellet harrier, which is the most threatened, one of the most threatened reptiles in Europe, um, we've given special attention for this bird. Um, the bird will hopefully be able to make it to next spring and go back to its country of origin to breed. In order to deter illegal poaching, BirdLife Malta has been organizing an international event called Raptor Camp. So Raptor Camp is one of two conservation camps that BirdLife Malta organizes during the peak migration of uh, many European uh, birds, most of them protected species. Particularly at this time of the year, uh, we organize Raptor Camp to coincide with the peak migration of birds of prey. Um, basically, we are out in the countryside to monitor bait migration and also monitor the problem of illegal hunting. For us, it's getting up about half past four in the morning to get organised before Nick gets us all fitted into groups and, and get us out. Um, so it's a long early stint, essentially uh, waiting in the mornings till the sun comes up, um, trying to see what's coming over, uh, watching the hunters, watching us and hoping by us being there that they're not actually going to shoot things they're not supposed to shoot. However, the small group of volunteers can't cover the whole island. We just received a call uh, regarding uh, an injured bird. From the description I can get it's a uh, kestrel, probably, or a falcon. So we've offered to go and pick up the bird. We were walking, I decided to jump over there, and it was just, I just found it there right in front of me. At first we didn't think it was alive, then its, it's tail started moving a bit and we, we found the... Uh, I don't know, we'll take it to the vet. No. Yeah. Hopefully it works out. The yeah, hobby that we just picked up from the, the people who found it at Chadwick Lakes, unfortunately, has just died. Uh, when we found it, it was obvious that the injuries were very serious. It looked as though it had been there for some time. We will still take it to a vet who will perform a post-mortem examination to try and ascertain the cause of death. A vet's examination revealed lead in the bird's body. Catching the perpetrators of this crime is impossible, and even when the evidence is fresh, it is more than difficult. Raptor camp volunteers go out in small teams of three to five. They may have two cameras, yet on a good day, the birds are everywhere. Despite the obvious nature of the crimes, it is difficult to gather the evidence. Oh! The 23rd of September 2012, we're at Santa Catarina, and we've just seen a buzzard being shot down. The criminals in this case were never found. Neither was the body of the bird. A bird which survives being shot is unusual. That it escapes the attention of the hunter is improbable, and the chances of it being found and handed to BirdLife Malta are slim. But there are some extremely lucky ones. We have a, a night heron that was recovered by a member of the public in Master Scala. It's juvenile, it's quite small in comparison to the adults. So it has a shotgun injury to the wing. Um, but the fracture is quite far out on the wingtip, so it can hold up the wing itself. And fortunately, we've got a couple of the BirdLife Malta reserves where we can release it and see how it goes. It'll have access to food, so even if it doesn't regain flight, we're, we're giving it a chance. It had um, soft tissue damage and bruising to the body just next to the shoulder. Um, but an x-ray was done and the joint and the bone there is intact. It should be able to function and find food, find food with that injury. It probably won't be able to leave the reserve, but there are night herons found here, so mm. it's nice to, to give it a chance. It's ready to go.
What's your favourite species? Lapwing. <laughs> I, I quite like birds. Um, I don't know, birds that are um, sort of a flock and are interesting to look at, you know, and, and do, you know, it has a superb display flight, a lovely call, flocks in winter and things, things like starlings as well, I really like. My uh, profession is countryside ranger, so I look after a country park in Bedfordshire, Rushmere Country Park. Excellent place to go, so you should go there. <laughs> We're looking at a wader trapping site at Delamara near the fireworks factory. Um, there's a couple of guys in the hide. He was out earlier with a a gun overlooking the site. Um, there's two song thrushes um, individually in cages down there. That, well, I find it quite astonishing that um, they can trap birds um, that are becoming more and more s scarce. Um, unfortunately, um, they're able to get derogations for some species, which enables them for a short period of time to uh, trap them and only trap a certain number of species. But how that's controlled? Is, I think that's impossible. Um, I've seen quite a few birds shot. Um, uh, this year's, uh, I started off really badly because I think the second morning I went out, I saw four or three birds actually went down the team scene, and another kestrel was shot at at least eight times, or a number of kestrels were shot at eight times. We only saw one bird. We managed to get one of the birds on film, which was a, a harrier species, probably a marsh harrier which came through, dropped one shot, dropped like a stone. Where so was this? This is at San Le Clau, mm -hmm. which is quite close to here. A couple of years ago, I was there in the evening, three or four honey buzzards came in and one shot straight down. Mm -hmm. But we got the police out, but of course it was a quarter of an hour before it got dark. And um, it's a very difficult area to actually film the hunters and find them doing stuff, so mm -hmm. it's difficult. And unfortunately, they keep opening a spring hunting season for turtle dove and quail. And of course, that is it. A cut, well, they do shoot a lot of turtle dove and quail, but they also, um, of course, target protected species as well. Mm -hmm. So it's it's horrendous to think they're coming back, having survived the winter in Africa, and then get shot in water, and and other Europe, uh, Mediterranean countries hold. Mm -hmm. So um, they need to stop shooting them. You know, if if we want to preserve them in in the whole of Europe, really, and. Um, I mean, hope and then wait for the numbers to increase again mm -hmm. before they start shooting again. But as the night set in, another call came through. That there is one very bad night, and I don't know which very bad. This is still bad on the field in, in some bushes. We were jogging in, uh, in that path and in that direction, and we came across the bird lying in some bushes. It has a pointed beak, so we would assume it's a bird of prey. Mm -hmm. It couldn't move, it had uh, one of its wings, was in an awkward position. We assumed that it has something wrong with it and it didn't fly away when we were, went here. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at is a juvenile marsh harrier with the left wing, which seems to be broken. The bird's in some distress. Uh, we'll take it to the vet tomorrow morning for this thing and we'll see. So that's where it's broken, and that's where it's the pellet entered the wing. The joint area is uh, fractured. The bird won't be able to fly with the wind like this. In fact, some birds are so strong, and yet they are so fragile. A bird of prey being down with a shot, it's frustrating, really bad. It makes you feel sick, mm. really. Such a magnificent bird, and there was something bang, bang, and just. Joe Sultana was on Comino Island to release a marsh harrier. Comino is ideal since it is one of the few areas in which hunting is not permitted. Personally, because I've been involved with bird like water when it was even in Moesa from the first year in 1962 when we started. We started the society in 1962 in January. There were about seven people who met and started it. Since then, I have seen great changes, quite, quite a lot of changes. In some ways to the worse, because before, at that time, people had no money, they had no spare time, they had to work. Then all of a sudden, when uh, with affluence, and this state where it was, but um, uh, 
there were better guns and more money and more spare time and so for some time we have seen it going from bad to worse and now it's changing again I think we are changing and things are getting better there are a lot of people now a lot of hunters who um, will obey the law but don't forget we have quite a lot of hunters and uh, it's there is still a high percentage I think that will shoot um, at birds of prey or at a hoopoe or golden or the origin there are others who don't and now we are seeing more birds in fact mm -hmm. because before they used to not even be able to cross over the island with everybody was shooting on them but now there are some hunters who respect the law mm. but there are still a lot who do, who do, who do not yeah. um, there are a lot of reasons why they do it they do it if some they want just to shoot use them as targets others want to have these stuffed bird collections to have as many different birds uh, as possible in the and uh, taxidermy is underhand now because it's illegal i don't think that there is at the moment someone who has a license to stuff birds we, we we have to stop this illegal hunting one way or another we have to keep on fighting it this takes time i remember when we started in 1962 the society you wouldn't dare going out with a pair of binoculars people would laugh at you <laughs> <laughs> going out bird watching was something that uh, was an example. Well, even even pr the protection of the environment. I mean, when I was young, the word environment was not in our vocabulary, let alone its protection. <laughs> so things have changed, and they have changed to the better. And I'm sure that they will keep on changing, mm -hmm. but it is still an uphill struggle. But we will we'll win one day. Mm -hmm. I won't be here, but the people coming after me, they will see it uh -huh. uh, much, much better. Back on Malta, two injured flamingos had been sighted. A flock of flamingos had been targeted from the Maltese coastline. Two had been injured badly, one ditching into the waters at Aura Point, the other at Salina Bay. The first flamingo was recovered by the Maltese Navy and taken to the government vet. The following day, the other was captured by hand and also taken for medical treatment. Despite the best efforts of the government vet, both birds died. The following week, a small flock of flamingos once again landed at Salina. Uninjured, the adult and three juveniles were resting. BirdLife Malta observers immediately set up a watch over the birds to prevent a reoccurrence of events. By the evening, the birds had recovered and carried on their migration undisturbed. Malta isn't the only place in which wildlife criminals operate. They are present in many other countries around the world. Tackling a global problem has to start at the local level. However, nothing will change unless people recognize and deal with the problem. <laughs>